Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. So, about 14 days ago I began to work on a project for a new video. But sadly I encountered so many problems that eventually I had to accept that I cannot get this to work. So today's video is not what I set out to do, but I feel that it might still be a good idea to share with you what I tried to build and why it didn't work out. So what did I plan to do for this video? When you play games over the internet then your experience is greatly affected by your ping or the latency between you and the server. Generally speaking, your ping is the result of the distance between you and the server or between you and the host of the game that you are playing. So the further away you are from the server, the higher your ping or the more lag you experience. But your ping is not only affected by the distance between you and the server. Many of you have surely experienced the game breaking issue where your ping instantly goes from a stable like 25 milliseconds to more than 200 milliseconds and eventually back to 25 milliseconds again. This is a sign of buffer bloat or congestion. It is quite easy to check if your router prioritizes data of real time applications such as online games to prevent that issue or if uploads and or downloads like your phone syncing pictures to the cloud or the buffering that occurs when someone starts to watch Netflix can cause delays for the data of the games you play and so result in massive game breaking ping spikes which might last for several minutes. Simply head over to dslreports.com, run the speed test and keep an eye on how stable your ping is while the upload and download tests are running. Please do not run this test over Wi-Fi as your Wi-Fi might have less bandwidth than your internet connection and might suffer from its own issues with congestion and interference. That is also why when it comes to online gaming you should always prefer LAN cables over Wi-Fi. So what if this test reveals that uploads and or downloads cause massive game breaking ping spikes? Luckily there is a solution which you can find on a few modern routers as well as custom router firmware like WRT. It is called flow queuing with controlled delay which prevents uploads as well as downloads from affecting the time sensitive data that is sent and received by the games you are playing. Now about a year ago I did a video about a router which supports that feature and so eliminates buffer bloat and the ping spikes it causes as you can see here in this side by side comparison. What gamers like about this router is that you can turn it into a setup and forget solution where you do not have to create any rules manually to get rid of a strict net status or to get a new game to work. That is unless you want to run your own local game server that must be accessible from the internet which is an entirely different subject. Now every admin who is responsible for the security of a business network will be quick to point out that such a setup is much less secure due to the use of the UPnP service. But since very few people have the patience to find all the ports used by their console and the games they play to then set up the required port forwarding rules manually, it is no surprise that switching on UPnP is a convenience over security choice that most gamers are willing to make. So all that you have to do to turn an edge router into a setup and forget solution is to enable smart queue as well as UPnP. It then fixes buffer bloat, you don't suffer from a strict net status, two or more people in your network can play the same game at the same time and two or more people can play on the same server at the same time. You do not have to create port forwarding rules, you do not have to redirect ports nor do you have to create any net rules on the edge router to get this to work. The issue however is that besides UPnP making the network less secure as any local client can punch a hole into your firewall then which is the convenience of a security choice that I mentioned earlier Flow queuing with control delay is a very demanding feature and so the processing power of your router quickly turns into a bottleneck for the throughput. This is why with smart queue enabled an edge router light as well as the USG cannot provide more than 60 megabits per second. So if your internet connection can do 200 megabits per second then you get limited to about 60 with the edge router light and the USG as soon as you turn on smart queue. In that situation smart queue will still prevent ping spikes but your internet speed is limited to 60 megabits per second because the hardware of the router reached its limits. The Edge Router X has more processing power which is why it can do at least 100 megabits per second when smart queue is enabled. While the new ER4 can do at least 200 megabits per second as it has a 4 core CPU where each core clocks at 1 gigahertz. 
Now, when you look at the HOS manual, then you will see values in the smart queue traffic shaping performance chart, which are higher than what I showed you here. However, how much performance you really get depends on what firewall rules and services you run on the router. The values that you can see here are taken from real life installations that I did over the past few years. So that is roughly what you can expect from these devices once you enable smart queue. But what if you pay for a connection that does 500 megabits per second and still suffers from buffer bloat? None of these edge routers can provide that throughput when smart queue is enabled. So you need a different solution. And that is what this video should have been about. My plan was to show you how you can take a PC or a mini PC and use PFSense or OpenSense to transform that PC into a router that provides much more processing power than an ERX or an ER4. And so get much more throughput when flow queuing with control delay is used to prevent buffer bloat. Now, I have used PFSense in the past for other purposes than gaming, which is why I thought that this should be a pretty simple and straightforward project. But before I continue, I want to make clear that I'm not saying that PFSense is a bad product. What I want to do here is share the issues I encountered while I tried to get gaming to work with PFSense and explain why I ultimately had to conclude that this is not an option for most gamers out there who want a setup and forget solution. Now, I'm sure that especially on YouTube, some will be very quick to point out that I don't know what I'm doing. So if you know how to get PFSense to provide a setup and forget solution like the edge routers do, then please use the email address in the description down below to contact me directly. If we can get this to work, then you can be sure that I will do a follow up video because I really want to get this to work. Now, what issues did I encounter? After I installed the latest version of PFSense, my consoles and games like Warframe on PC reported a strict NAT status, which meant that games like Warframe did not work at all. But that was not a surprise because UPnP was not enabled yet. However, after I enabled UPnP as well as NetPMP, the net status remained strict on the PlayStation, the Xbox, as well as in Warframe and other games. And that was despite the fact that the clients showed up in the UPnP status window on PFSense. In order to get an open net status with PFSense, I had to create a static port net rule, as it is explained in the PFSense documentation, which then disables the rewriting of the source port on outgoing connections. So that was the first confusing issue that I had to deal with, because on the edge router, as well as literally any other router that I tested in the past, you just had to enable UPnP. Nothing else had to be done to get rid of a strict net status. So at this point I thought that I had fixed the issue as I could now play games on console and on PC without any problems. That was until I launched Warframe on a second PC at the same time, because then the second player got an error message that ports are blocked as you can see here. Which sort of makes sense as the static port net rule disabled the rewriting of the source port, but now I had two clients use the same ports. So Warframe worked, but only on one PC at a time. A second player could not play Warframe at all. And I'm just using Warframe here as an example. It is not the only game that is affected by this. Luckily Warframe provides a setting inside the options menu which allows you to change which ports it uses. And so I could get the game to work on two PCs at the same time. However, while I was glad that this option exists, I think that the game should automatically switch ports when it detects that the ones it tries to use are not working and only show an error message after it tried several different ports. So at that point I got a very bad feeling, which was confirmed when I next tried Apex Legends. If two players try to play on the same server together, then one of the two got disconnected as soon as the matchmaker found a server, which was logical as both connections to the server used the same port as the game server uses just one port. So you cannot go and change the port like you can in Warframe, which does not use dedicated game servers. However, in my tests, two players could play on different servers at the same time, as not all servers use the same port. But if you want to play Apex Legends together, then this is a massive issue with PFSense. Battlefield 5, on the other hand, could only be played by one player at a time. The player who launched the game after the first one could not join any server at all. When I then disabled the static port net rule, then both players could play Apex Legends together on the same server. They could also play Battlefield 5 together, but the invite system was still not working. 
So I could get Apex Legends and Battlefield 5 to work by disabling the static port net rule. However, with that rule disabled, I now had a strict net status again, which meant that Warframe, Destiny 2, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Black Ops 4 and many other games no longer worked correctly. So after 14 days where I tested many different configurations, moved my PF Sense box and my two test PCs into the office to test on a different type of internet connection, watched and read a ton of tutorials about gaming with PFSense and asking about this issue on the official forums where I found other topics about pretty much the same issues, I eventually had to arrive at the conclusion that neither PFSense nor OpenSense provide that setup and forget solution because UPnP on PFSense does not work like it does on other routers. Sure, you can potentially get this setup to work without using UPnP, but most gamers do not want to constantly research which ports a game uses and then create port forwarding and redirect rules, which gets really tricky once you play on more than one system or when you have more than one person in your network playing games. Again, I'm not saying that PFSense is a bad product. All that I'm saying here is that I could not use it for what I intended to use it for. When only one person in your network is playing games, then enable UPnP, create a static port net rule and games will work just fine. But as soon as there is a second or a third person playing games at the same time, I ran into issues that are not easy to overcome and it all seems to boil down to how UPnP is implemented in PFSense, which isn't a very important feature for most PFSense installations as I read in the PFSense forum. So if you are thinking about building your own router with PFSense or OpenSense, then you should first do a test setup to see if it will do the job for your specific network setup or if you run into the same issues as I did. But I also have some good news. One of you recommended another firewall to me a few days ago, which I have been testing since. And it doesn't suffer from any of the issues that I encountered with PFSense. It even provides a few features which help with the small ping spikes that Steam downloads as well as BitTorrent connections can still cause even with SmartQ active on an edge router. I will test that setup for a few more days, but I think that I will soon be able to do a full setup tutorial as I did not run into any issues yet while running that firewall in my house. And that's all for today. Massive shout out to my patrons as their support allows me to create videos like this one. If you would like to support me as well, then you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you will also find links to my social accounts in case that you want to stay up to date on the videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.